I understand that you may need some kind of self-evolution to properly assess yourself and to know if you've done the important things you need to do in the jam mathematics syllabus. I also understand that it can be overwhelming sometimes to go through the jam mathematics syllabus and to study the topics one by one, especially if you have limited amount of time on your side. Whatever the case is, this video will go a long way to help you and to help any other person you know who is sent for jam mathematics exam. All I needed to do is to share this video across to them so they too can be properly prepared for the upcoming exam. In this video, I've listed out 15 most repeated topics in jam mathematics to help you improve your score in mathematics this year. And the reason for this is because the number of you asked for this video, so I thought of making it and bringing it up before you. My name is Nandi. I'm a first class graduate of chemical engineering from the University of Puyo and on this channel my aim is to help you achieve academic excellence. Before I proceed on to listing these topics let me mention for the sake of emphasis that these are only the most repeated topics in jam mathematics. They are not all the topics to be considered when preparing for jam mathematics. They are the most repeated topics after careful analysis following my research process. So for optimum results it is best you study everything in the jam mathematics syllabus but if you don't have the time to go through all of that it's still fine. This video will go a long way to help you and I'll be dropping a link in the description box that will direct you to the comprehensive syllabus. Actually, there are 23 topics in the jam mathematics syllabus and these topics have numerous subtopics. So if you want to spread them out like that, it will be so much, it will be so bulky. So what I've done so far is to filter out 15 of them that are mostly repeated. And I believe if you know these topics so well, you will do really well in your jam mathematics exam this year. So without wasting much time, let's get right into these topics. Now the first on the list is indices. Now here you need to understand the basic laws of indices. Understand the product law and the quotient law. And understand that these laws can only be applied only when the basis are equal. That is in an expression, these laws can only be applied if the basis are the same. Also learn about the zero power law and the negative index law. For the zero power law, don't forget that anytime you have an expression that's equal to one and then you're asked to find an unknown on the other side of the expression. Bring the same base to the side where you have the one and raise it to the power of zero so that that base raised to the power of zero is still equal to one. So when you've done that, the both have the same basis now. And so you can just go ahead to cancel the basis to have only the powers. For example, look at this expression I found in one of these, I think 2022. First, transform it to this form and then you can now cancel the basis. And the second topic is logarithm. I think all you need to do here is to learn about the laws governing logarithm. Most importantly, learn and know how to apply the product and the quotient laws of logarithm. They are very, very important. And also know that the logarithm of one to any base at all is equal to zero. Know that logarithm of a number to a base itself is equal to one. Learn these things, they are very, very important and they will go a long way to help you know how to solve problems relating to logarithm. Now also know that when a log of a particular base is raised to an unknown and it equals to a number and you're asked to find that number, all you have to do is to raise that base to the power of that number and equate it to that unknown and it gives you the value for that unknown. You can try this problem I saw I think one of the years in the course of my research. In this case, 9 is raised to the power of 1.5 and it gives you the value of x. Now the next topic is sorts. Sort is another topic that is often repeated. All you have to do is to learn about sorts, learn about the laws governing sorts, like the product law, the quotient law, and also learn about the sum and the difference laws. They are very, very important because they will go a long way to help you know how to tackle certain questions. Also learn about rationalization and know when you have to rationalize. Why should you rationalize? Actually, we rationalize, especially when dealing with fractions, to remove the sort from the denominator. So in the course of solving problems that has to do with sort, you don't have to leave the value of the denominator in sort form. The next topic on the list is sets. Now for sets, learn about Venn diagrams and also learn how to interpret them. Very, very important. Also learn about the concepts of union and intersect. And don't make the mistake of confusing one symbol for the other. Know which is for intersect and know which is for union. And also know when to use union and when to use intersect. Also learn what problems on sets and also learn how to translate what problems into Venn diagrams. Learn set theorems like union law, intersection law, and also distributive law. These are the most important theorems you have to learn because I think in the course of my research, I've been seeing them really frequently. The next topic on the list is number bases. Although they are not so much about number bases, but then just learn how to convert from one base to another. And also learn how to add, subtract, multiply in different bases. It will go a long way to help you really well. The next topic is variation. This is one topic that surfaces very, very often. And I plead with you to learn about direct and inverse variation. 
although there are other types of variation but please just be focused on direct and inverse variation you should know their differences and manner of approach for each case and you should be able to tell at a glance what kind of problem or what kind of variation the problem is talking about when you look at a particular problem you should be able to tell okay this is inverse variation or this is direct variation you should be very good at that although most times it is stated in the question for direct variation, you just see this is proportional to this. But for inverse variation, it will be stated that it's inversely proportional. And you should also know that for inverse variation or for inverse proportionality, it is always one all over the variable, one all over a variable. It is not as direct as for the act direct variation. It is something is proportional to one over something. And you should also know that for each case, you have to find the value of k first after introducing the equality sign. And then you can make appropriate substitution to find the value of any unknown you're asked to find in the question. The next topic is ratios, proportions, and rates. Although this topic is very broad and has numerous questions under it that you cannot just say the name exactly to each kind of question. But to be on the safe side, I advise that you learn how to solve problems like this, like this, and like this. Practice them a lot. In short, make the past question your good friend and practice problems as much as you can relating to these topics because they come in different forms and I really want that when whichever form it takes, you should be able to tackle them. The next topic is change of subject formula. This is another important topic you have to learn. I think in all the years in the course of my research, I've come across this topic, change of subject formula. So you should, all you have to learn how to do here is to know how to approach problems and how to find, how to make certain variables subject of formula. Irrespective of their positions, that is these variables now, irrespective of where they are in the equation, you should be able to know how to approach it. If it's a linear equation, you should be able to know what to do. If it's a kind of equation that has query sign, you should be able to know what to do at first. For example, look at a problem like this. You should know that the first thing you have to do here is to remove the square root signs by having the squares of both sides. And then you go ahead to cross multiply and then finally you can find the value of V. That is just how to go about problems like this. In short, whenever you have problems that has to do with square root signs, the first thing you have to do is to square both sides. So I have to take off the square root signs first. That's the first thing you have to do irrespective of the kind of problem it is. Then after removing the square root signs, then you can go ahead to simplify the problem. You can also try this problem I saw in I think one of the years, I think 2008 or so. Just try and see if you can just solve it. The next topic is progression. This is another repeated topic you have to learn. Please, I plead with you to learn this topic progression. Learn about AP and learn about GP. That is arithmetic progression and geometric progression respectively. Also learn what problems relating to them, very, very important. If there are what problems relating to this AP and GP, please try as much as possible to learn them. Also learn the formula for calculating the nth term of AP and GP because you'll be needing them when trying to solve what problems re relating to AP and GP, relating to progression as a whole. For AP, this is a formula, and for GP, this is a formula. Please learn this formula, memorize them, so that when you come across a problem, you know how to tackle them, and you don't have to think so much to recall these formulas. Please try to have these formulas at your fingertips. It is very, very important as well. Another topic that is often repeated is circles. Although it is very broad, but please try and pay more attention to these areas I'm about to list out. Learn a few theorems regarding circles and see how you can apply them when it comes to solving problems relating to circles. It is very important as well. Also, practice problems relating to circles. Learn how to calculate the length of an arc within a circle and other, and other important parts of a circle. Please don't joke with this topic. It is very, very important. And I'm somehow confident that questions will show up from this particular topic, circle, because so far I've always been seeing circles in majority of the years. Also, another topic you need to learn is geometry of straight line. This is another very important topic you have to learn, please. This topic is very important and I plead with you to learn equations of a straight line. The distance between two points very very important know how to find the distance between two points and know the formula used in calculating this distance you should also be able to calculate the gradient of a line passing through two points and also don't forget that gradient is the same thing as slope so in whichever way it is used in your question whether slope or gradient they mean the same thing and they have the same formula look at this question i saw and you should know what to do here 
you should know the formula for calculating this, which is equal to gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 all over x1. You should know all these things. Know how to apply this formula. Another important topic you need to know is permutation and combination. This topic is one topic you have to learn because I've seen it several times, multiple times in different occasions. Learn permutation, learn combination, and you should know their differences. And you should be able to know at a glance which of the concepts is being referred to when you see a problem. You should know that permutation has to do with arrangement and combination has to do with selection. Very important. This will help you to know what concept is being referred to when you see a particular problem. They have different formulas. Please learn these formulas and know how to apply them. Now, you may not go in depth trying to know how to apply them because so far, the questions I've been seeing so far are just on the basic levels, are just on the surface levels. So you can just try to know how to apply them. And the past question will guide you as to knowing what you should expect when you see problems about permutation and combination. So I advise that you get hold of past questions and then you try to handpick problems relating to permutation and combination and trying to solve them. It is very, very important. It will just give you an idea of what to expect in the example. Probability is another highly repeated topic you need to learn. Please learn probability. Learn the basic formulas in probability and know how to apply it in problems. And you should know when to use addition and multiplication signs. It's very, very important. On what occasion should you use addition and on what occasion should you use multiplication. It is very important. So you don't get confused. Don't confuse both of them when you see a problem. Multiplication is used for independent events, that is, events that can happen separately. It does, not, it does not have to wait for one to happen first before another one happens. They can happen separately and simultaneously. So multiplication is used for problems of this kind. Addition is used for mutually exclusive events, that is events that cannot happen simultaneously. So for addition, one event has to take place before another one takes place. Also know what signs you should use when you see words like and and both. You can try to solve this problem I saw. Now the 14th topic is algebra. These are another topic that occurs frequently but in different forms. So, Learn algebra also, it's very important. And the basic thing you should learn here is factorization. Learn factorization properly. And then also learn about the roots of equation. Learn the formula for average speed. I don't know why this question, so far I've been seeing questions regarding to regarding average speed, that is average speed is equal to distance all over time. I don't know, but then just learn, this. just know this formula, average speed is equal to distance over time. And also learn how to simplify problems when you have to apply board, board mass, that is B O D M A S, or you have bracket of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction in that order. So you know how to use them. When you have an expression, with different operations. The 15th topic is geometry and trigonometry. Please learn about geometry and trigonometry. For this topic, learn about the properties of angles and lines. Also learn some theorems about alternate angles and know that alternate angles are equal when a transversal intersects two parallel lines. Learn also that sum of angles on a straight line is equal to 180 and so on. It will go a long way to help you to know how to approach problems and then know what particular kind of theorem you have to apply in a particular problem you will see. And for trigonometry, learn trigonometry generally. And also know the trig functions like sine, cos, tan of some special angles like 30, 45 and 60. They are very, very important also. And learn how to apply them. And you should also know these things offhand without looking at your paper or anything. You should know, for example, sine 30, sine 60, and all of that. So all these bits for these special angles, it's very important that you learn them. So with this, we've come to the end of today's video. And like I mentioned earlier, these are not all the topics you need to pay attention to if you really want to excel really high in your jump mathematics exam. There are other topics like differentiation and integration, like inequality and so on. But these topics I listed out are the most repeated topics so far in the course of my research. So please, if you found value in this content, please do me a favor, kindly like this content so you can get to the reach of other people like you who are looking forward to doing exceptionally well in mathematics this year. And until next time, take care.